we're in here. It is Monday. Monday, brand new week, brand new energy. Bring you the number one form for Crimson Tide football news in my own words. With yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. This month goes out on Wednesday, or on Thursday, excuse me, for continuing to bring you the best in Alabama football coverage. Coming to you live from the magic city of Birmingham, streaming you the show on YouTube. Speaking of the channel, go ahead right now, drop a thumbs up, give a like on the show, hit that subscribe button, turn all of those notifications on, hit that little bell so that way you can have all the forms of entertainment on your favorite program, that being Alabama football. We also got you covered on Facebook and Twitter as well. All forms of social media streaming to you, the show. No excuse whatsoever for you not to be locked in for the number one form here of Todd Football. Got quite a few things to get into on this evening. I mean, it's crazy, people. Pro Football Folk is putting up this graphic that, uh, you know, if De'Aaron King is healthy for Miami, then the Hurricanes will be able to put Alabama on upset watch and do something special here in the ACC. I mean, Miami, enjoy the hype watch there. Enjoy the hype while it's here because when you get punched in the mouth September 4th on that Saturday – in Atlanta to face the Crimson Tide or in face in the Crimson Tide, the question will be how will the Hurricanes respond? Because remember, in 2017, uh, the national media was given the same hype to Florida State with uh, Jimbo Fish with the Seminoles between Bama and Florida State saying all these things about, you know, FSU and what happened the moment Ronnie Harrison took Deon took uh, DeAndre Francois out. It was a completely different game. It was a completely different story. Alabama broke Florida State the moment that the big hit was placed there on De uh, DeAndre Francois. So you've already got people like Pro Football Focus hyping up Manny Diaz, hyping up DeAndre King, hyping up Miami. We shall see what happens. Guys, shout out my man John Ivor in the building, in the production studio, doing the ones and twos as he usually does. We want you guys, the Todd Nation, being a part of tonight's show. And you can do this by calling 205-448-1358. That is the number to dial to let your opinion be made on the show. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you. As we start tonight's show here, over the weekend, you know, we all felt just a little bit old <laughs> over the weekend. And I'm not going to say I myself felt old because this particular individual is only three years older than me. But we that consume Crimson Tide football felt a little bit old as Dre Kirkpatrick, former Alabama cornerback Dre Kirkpatrick, who played from 2009 to 2011 in the Nick Saban era. He was on campus over the weekend, and uh, he and his son, Dre Kirkpatrick Jr. So Dre was uh, on a recruiting visit to the university with his son, and it's just crazy how for a lot of you as Tide fans, you went, man, I must be old. It felt like yesterday Dre was walking up in here and now his son's here. I didn't know he had a son. Where'd the son come from? Dre got a boy? He, he in high school? Man, I'm old. When did this happen? Yes, Dre Kirkpatrick, 31 years of age. His son has to be between 15 and 16 uh, years old. Uh, Dre Jr., class of 2024. He's listed as an athlete in, uh, on, on his Twitter account, but on his Twitter page, but he plays the same position as his pops playing at that cornerback spot, uh, Dre Jr. at Gadsden City High School. And, uh, you know, what's interesting here is that, you know, Dre taking in the recruitment of his son. You know, his son was out there camping, you know, doing his 40 time, going through drills, going through the different uh, stations there on campus. And, of course, you know, Dre is walking through the facility, walking through the buildings, because you know there's a lot of, there's a lot of new things here on campus. There's a lot of nuances here on campus. And Kirkpatrick has never seen these, you know, since he left. So he's walking through the building. He's seeing his first-round jersey on the wall. He's seeing his name on, on a bunch of stuff. And it's all coming back to him that, man, I helped build this. I helped started this. I helped 
put together the Bama way, the Bama standard. Of course, like I mentioned, he came in five-star in the 09 class. And that's just all that's kind of hitting him. You know, chills is up his body. You know, I imagine he's crying because he's like, my God, like, I set the standard, and now my son is camping at the very same program but I played it. My son is learning from Nick Saban. My son is getting the self-same coaching that I got you know, years ago. So th this brings us to, to the idea of could we have the first father-son tandem of the Nick Saban era at Alabama when you discuss Drake Kirkpatrick played here and now his son camping here now. You know, son in the 10th grade, class of 2024, so he's got some time to, to make that decision, but knowing how much influence Dre has in his son's life, uh, Dre Jr. may 100% find his way at the University of Alabama. What's interesting here is when Dre was here, Dre was 6'2", 190. His son already is six feet 175, and the brother ain't done growing yet. So his son is going to be taller, possibly thicker than he was. Now, will he end up being better than Dre if he comes to Alabama? That will be the biggest question of the whole pie. But this is just really, really cool and really awesome to see. And just, just to think about this here for a second, when Dre played at Alabama, I mean, we saw the numbers he put up. I mean, 82 tackles, eight of those tackles for loss, six pass breakups, you know, three interceptions, had a phenomenal career here, got drafted in 2012 to play with the Cincinnati Bengals. He has put in, you know, nine years in pro ball, eight of those years in Cincinnati, put in last season with the Arizona Cardinals. So we already see where, you know, Dre has passed down the genes. He's passed down the game. He's passed down the flow uh, to his son. It's just going to be really, really cool, really exciting to watch this. And it's going to be great for me because Dre's junior year at Alabama was my freshman year at the program as, as a young, you know, intense reporter getting thrust into the spotlight of really covering this team and really, you know, going to these practices and going to these press conferences and going to these games my first year was Dre's you know, third year. So uh, getting the chance to see this all go full circle to where I got a chance to cover the dad for a whole year and provide it if the son comes in 2024, good Lord may allow me to have three to four years to cover the son. So this is a very uh, happy, very intriguing moment for yours truly as well but a little bit of a serendipitous serendipity of a moment there uh for bama nation you got the chance to watch kirkpatrick uh come through here have success at the capstone have success where the crimson tide is concerned and now you're seeing a son making his routes here on the recruiting trail will dre jr choose the tide will dre jr go bama once again class of 2024 we will see but my goodness over the weekend all of us felt just a little bit older seeing this thing take shape but uh very happy for dre crying happy joyful his son walking in his footsteps but we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting started. Upon our return, we take your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your chats, your ideas, your conversations right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. 
Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. We are back to the action here, folks, from the break of the number one form for Bama football news on a Monday. In my own words, yours truly. Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Just want to definitely apologize to you, the fans, for those for the technical difficulties prior to coming into the show. Technology is a crazy thing. Uh, the restream at times, it, it freezes up. It goes kind of slow there. We're definitely having that worked on. Definitely looking into that right now. But we appreciate you, the Bama fan base, for hanging with us, for being patient, sticking with us as we got into the show but we got some super chats to get to as you guys showing the love as always that daily super chat go $75 daily go there so we start off with Gucci Todd that $10 donation coming from Gucci Todd appreciate him and then McConnick follow suit with a $10 donation on his end behind McConnick let's see here we got Jimmy Cash Clay Jimmy the bad man Clay that $30 donation appreciate Jimmy Clay Evan Willie 351, that's 777 coming in from him. So appreciate the love from all the fans pouring into us here on the show, making this your show here, your network, your channel. As we're back here from the break here, folks, we uh, call lines open, time for that call segment, 205-448-1358. Uh, that's the number to call in to let your voice be heard. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. But as you're getting your thoughts in here, going to go to a quick topic. And I had the joy of attending the Jalen Hurts Youth football camp at the Hoover Met Complex, the Hoover Met Fields over the weekend. People, it was an incredible camp. Jalen Hurts, his brother Avrion, did an outstanding job. I mean, the camp sold out in seconds. It was for ages 6 to 16. You want to talk about massive support, black, white, Hispanic, they, they were out there. Full support. Full support. I mean, it was wall to wall, field to field, like I had to squeeze in. What was crazy was there was a lady, you know, huge Bama fan and a uh, friend of the family, and she sees me walking from a mile away. She's like, oh, there's the legendary super, there's the legendary celebrity. I'm looking around like, what the heck is she talking about? Is ESPN here? She's like, no, honey, I'm talking about you. You're here for the camp, right? Baby, let me escort you in. You royalty. Jalen's right over there. I'm like, my goodness, I'm getting escorted in by the friend of the family. So kind of felt, <laughs> kind of felt a little bit privileged then, but it was an awesome camp. I mean, Jalen and his brother really made, Jalen and Avrion, they made a, uh, those young kids feel at home. Uh, they made those young campers feel special. Uh, a lot of potential out there at that camp. Like I saw some catches. I saw some routes. I saw some plays. I saw some performances. Like you got some real in-state potential in these camps. So big shout out to Jalen Hurts. Big shout out to the entire Hurts family. I had myself a well of a great time there. If you have not been able to check out the videos that I posted on Twitter from the camp, you can check them out there on my Twitter page at Coaching M. Smith on Twitter. That's at Coaching M. Smith. Quite a few of those videos that went viral. When we're actually working on putting together a package uh, for YouTube, our own John Ivory, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be getting that out there uh, pr pr pretty short here, just uh, pretty soon here, just getting the package there of those videos from the Jalen Hurts camp. But we go to another break right now, folks, on the show. We don't touch that down. Upon our return, we're going to get into a, in, an intriguing topic about Malachi Moore. He has a chance to do very, he has a chance to do something special here as a second year player, as a sophomore. More. What is that you might say? We'll talk about it after this. You know what we 
we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now, you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We're back in, folks. Back into the action here from the break. I'm going to inform for Crimson Tide Football News. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Once again, people appreciate you guys being patient with us, sticking with us throughout the, uh, the technical issues there. We are looking into those, but we are continuing to give you the show here talking your Crimson Tide. But cool topic here is we're looking at Malachi Moore, Alabama defensive back Malachi Moore. And um, he has a chance to do something really, really special here in this upcoming season as a sophomore, second-year player. When you discuss, like, main, uh, the major national defensive player of the year awards in college football, we're, we're looking at the awards like the Jim Thorpe Award, the Chuck Bettenderick Award, the Bronco Nagurski Award, the Dick Butkus Award. Of course, one of those four is for, uh, would be for linebackers, but the other three, you know, major, major defensive awards. And when you look at Malachi, he's got a shot to be the first true sophomore of the Nick Saban era at Alabama to win uh, just multiple National Defensive Player of the Year awards. And, of course, you know, we saw – what this young man did a season ago, we don't have to go into all the nooks and the crannies and the numbers and the production and the stats, but we know what he did. Half the three interceptions a season ago, half the six to seven pass breakups, only gave up one touchdown, did a lot of big, big things here. But the reason why I'm bringing up just the fact that he could be the first true sophomore to win a bunch uh, of multiple awards here is, you think about this for a minute. When you discuss guys like Minka Fitzpatrick, uh, Mika Fitzpatrick, Antonio Langham, and Jonathan Allen, all three of these guys won national awards. You look at Minka, Minka won the Jim Thorpe Award in 2017. He won the Chuck Bettenderick Award in 2017. Uh, Antonio Langham won the Jim Thorpe Award in 1993. And Jonathan Allen in 2016 won the Nagurski Award and the Chuck Bettenderick Award. Now, the reason now, the, the, these guys won these awards, but they won them as upperclassmen. They won them as juniors and seniors. Where Malachi is concerned, he's got a chance to win this as a as a sophomore, and uh, he's often compared to Minka Fitzpatrick. Malachi is often compared to Minka. When people look at both guys, they say, you know, Malachi's got the instincts of Minka. He's got the technique of Minka. He's got the hard work as Minka. He's got the IQ as Minka. He's got the, the, the aggressiveness and the, and the effort and the intangibles as Minka. Probably the one thing, the one area in Malachi's game where he's going to look for take that next step in as he's, as he's working with one uh, Justin Woodall, former Alabama safety, throughout the summer, is being able to hit home when Alabama sends him on the blitz. There were a few times, a couple of times last season where Bama sent Malachi on a little corner blitz, a little stunt blitz off the edge, a little stunt blitz off the outside, and Malachi so close to hitting home and getting the sack and making the play just did not quite get there in time this season. Season, he looks to be able to add that to his game to continue the comparisons between him and Minka. But when I just look at this upcoming season here uh, where Malachi is concerned, you look at the work ethic that he puts in, you look at the 
performance that he showed last year and what he's going to look to do even more so this year. In my opinion, and, and I've had this conversation with Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman who coached Malachi as a defensive coordinator at Hewitt Trustfield. He's now you know, a defensive line coach at Lowndes High School in Georgia, a powerhouse over there. But in having this conversation with Rudy Griffin, we both kind of thought to ourselves out loud and stating how if Moore duplicates the season he had in 2020, but if he adds one to two pick sixes to that stat total, he will get the Thorpe Award. He will get the Bronco Nagurski, and he will get the Chuck Bettendarek. I, I think he'll get all three. If he has the same year – that he had in 2020, if he's able to put up the same number of tackles, probably you know, 10 to probably five or ten more, but virtually the same amount of tackles, the same amount of pass breakups, the same amount of tackles for loss, maybe add a couple of sacks there. But the biggest thing, if he can add maybe one to two pick sixes to his stat line, then I truly see him getting the Thorpe Award for Nation's best defensive back. I see him getting the Bronco Nagurski Award that goes to uh, the nation's the, uh, college football's best defensive player, and I see him getting the Chuck Bettendarek Award that goes to college football's top defensive player of the year. I can 100% see him getting all three of those, as well as, you know, first team all SEC, first team all American, uh, things of that nature, and then going one step closer to potentially being, you know, a top five, a top 10 draft pick in the future. But Right now, you know, we just look at him being a sophomore, him being a second-year player. Alabama has never had in the history of the Nick Saban era, in the Nick Saban era, and possibly in the history of Bama football. Period. It's never had a true sophomore. It's never had a second-year player. You know, rack up all of the. Uh, you know, major defensive player of the year awards on a national scale. And this is the area where Malachi Moore has a chance to really etch his name in stone and being a Bama legend and being a Bama, you know, figure and being somebody that will live on in the folklore of Bama football. He's already getting the prestige. He's already getting the name. He's already getting the excitement just based on the instincts of the football IQ and the way he was quickly able to get out on the field as a freshman despite COVID and everything else and make plays, but keep your eyes on that young man this year. He's got a chance to take that very next jump and be something very, very ideal. But we take another break here on the show. People don't touch that dial because upon our return, we do get back to the phone lines to take your phone calls, to take your thoughts, to take your conversations right after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit weownthefourthquarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, we are back in from the break of the Monday. Getting that work week started off for you correctly. Number one form for Bama. Football news in my own words. Before we go to the phone lines here, John, John, get the horn ready. We got two major super chats. So right now, 
We got Jimmy Cash Clay, the $25 donation. Here comes the horn from John Ivory, but behind him, holy moly, McConnick has dropped in 90 bucks. McConnick's dropped in 90 bucks. Helping us out here on the show. The daily goal of $75 has been met. And for, for you, fan, thank you. Thank every single last one of you, despite all that goes on with technology and so forth. We're doing everything we can. Me personally, I'm doing everything I can. I can speak for John Ivory as well to give you the best, to give you grade A. When you talk about that, and I'm not talking about eggs in aisle five. I'm saying grade A of everything when it comes down to Crimson Tide football, we will continue our pouring of ourselves to give you guys the best in Crimson Tide football. We got some new stuff coming. Got some new stuff coming on the horizon, so we want you guys to be prepared for that. But thank all of you for the love. Thank all of you for the support. Thank all of you for the donations. Thank all of you for making this your show. Put the horn on them again, John. Put the horn on everybody again. I mean, you get outstanding people here. Outstanding people here helping us out with the show. Is concerned, but as always, people 205 448 1358 number to call in there 205 448 1358. Want to hear from you here on the show? But as you guys continue to get your thoughts in here, got a quick, cool, awesome topic. So, Alabama and Nick Saban, so close. I mean, Nick Saban has done some incredible things in recruiting in Alabama, whether it's been a uh, Flipping recruits from rival programs or recruiting international kids or, you know, trying to have that legacy kid, you know, Dre Kirkpatrick son following behind Dre. I mean, Nick Saban has done some incredible things on the recruiting trail. But he nearly had a U.S. Olympian. Saban, this close, nearly had a U.S. Olympian on the roster. When you look at Arion Knighton, 17 years old, uh, when he was 16, a young man from Tampa, Florida, went to Hillsborough High School. I watched this kid's highlight tape in football. This kid could have really been a great, he could have been a great football player. 6'3", 170, played quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and free safety in high school. You want to talk about smooth, quick, agile, hands, Ability to break tackles, explosiveness. Brother had it all in high school playing football. But at the age of 16, he quickly found out, hey, my calling is in track and field. He hooks up with a, with a coach. You know, he turns pro, signed a deal with Adidas. Uh, and right now, I mean, the, the guy at the U.S. Olympic trials on last week was just incredible ran the 200 meters at 19.88 seconds which he has the world under 18 record and the world under 20 record for that time and the 200 meters surpassing the great Usain Bolt's numbers it's just uh, uh, unbelievable and then he had an Alabama offer for the class of 2022 prior to this happening so I mean could you imagine after having uh, Judy Ruggs, Smith, and Waddle. Could you imagine if Arion Knighton would have stayed in high school and would have, and would have kept with football? Now, he, he did the right thing doing track. He did the right thing pursuing his love, pursuing track and field, absolutely. I'm just saying, if he would have stayed, if he would have did football and would have, to, would have came to Alabama, could you imagine Arion Knighton, that speed, that athleticism? That burst on this roster, uh, on, in this program, Shh, nasty. If that brother would have came here, but it, it's just it just goes to show, you know, Nick Saban, he, that man recruits, and nearly had a U.S. Olympian wear here at the Crimson Tide program. But we go to another break here, folks, on the show. Don't touch that down because upon our return, we discuss one Evan Neal who has been just impressing not only the strength staff here at Alabama, but th this guy has a, has a real chance of being not just a uh, individual award winner this season, but in particular a first-round pick, a top-five pick 
for 2022. We'll talk Evan Neal after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We are back in here, folks, from the break, tidying up some loose ends here on the number one forum for Crimson Tide Football News. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate everybody for chatting in, writing in, donating in, super chatting in, all the love being shown here on the show for this Monday. And before we get into the final topic of conversation, got to remind you of TDAWare.com. That is TDAWare.com. So for all of you fans still overjoyed with the Crimson Tides National Championship, we want you to check out our championship collection merch. Now this means you grab you an 18 of them things, folk hoodie, t-shirt or sweatshirt, as well as our Got 18 We Do shirts. Designs that feature all 18 championship years on the back. You head on over to TDAWare.com, do it right now. TDAWare.com and you go to the Championship Collections merch tab and you get you that gear today showing that support for Coach Saban, the University of Alabama, for student athletes and us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. People, um, Alabama has had some great offensive linemen of the Nick Saban era. So, so, some great offensive linemen, regardless of position, center, left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle, it doesn't matter. But none of them have have, have had, or, or none of them have the freakish athleticism, just the crazy freakish athleticism of Evan Neal. Evan Neal is a different dude. Evan Neal is a different cat. E- Evan Neal is a different monster at 6'7", 360 pounds. And we saw last season all 13 games of right, at right tackle what he did. Great job protecting uh, Mac Jones. Great job helping Najee Harris have a 1,400-yard rushing season, 425 yards receiving, 30-plus touchdowns. Did a great job of with his protection of Mac Jones and allowed for Devontae Smith to have a Heisman Trophy year. So we, we, we saw what Evan Neal did last season. We saw what Evan Neal did in 2019, his first season, as an offense, as an offensive guard. But what Evan I- is doing – he, his athleticism, his quick, fast, nimble, explosive feet are just impressing and blowing away the, the, the strength staff of David Ballou and Dr. Matt Ray. David Ballou and Matt Ray, they have seen incredible feats in their time, but Matt Ray in particular, he had the offensive line doing uh, – uh, jump, uh, ju- split jumps today. He had them, he had them doing split jumps. And so what split jumps are, I think they're kind of, you start off in a lunge, and then you go from a lunge to a jump, and then a squat. It, it, it just, it, it, it tests your speed. It tests your quickness. It tests your balance. Most importantly, it tests your peak power. How much power can you generate and the amount of speed you generate and doing this particular motion. And for Dr. Ray, on average, the threshold, you want the offensive lineman doing you know, 2,000 watts of this. That's the average threshold, 2,000 watts. Now at Alabama, they've been getting the offensive lineman 
to, to double that at 4,000 watts. But the most, you know, Dr. Ray has seen, you know, 4,000 watts, and he's fine with that. You know, he, he's, he's never one for average. Dr. Ray always wants to go above and beyond, above average. What's excellent? What's elite that we can push here? But with Evan Neal, his, jump, his split jumps registered at 5,808, and Dr. Ray's like, what? 5,808? That's the most I've ever seen. That's the most I've, that's the highest that that's ever been recorded. That's the highest that's ever been registered. That's the highest we've, we've ever had. Are, are, are we getting this right? But he jumped, did he record 5,808? Evan Neal's different. Evan, Evan Neal is different. And this is the same Neal that before the season last year, where David Ballou had him on the, bo on, on, on the, on the box jump, in, in, the, in the box jump video, I mean, the, the, the explosiveness to, to get on the box, to coordinate it, to perform the perfect box jump with, at that size, at that weight, you don't see that. You don't see that. So, so, what, so what does all this mean, you might ask? What does this mean is you're about to see a left tackle that is going to seriously protect Bryce Young. Because, like, like I mentioned, Bama has had great offensive linemen, but none this freakish where upon the snap of the ball, he is going to be stalemating, uh, neutralizing uh, edge rushers on the defensive line, speed rushers at the second level. When you talk outside linebackers, and if the defense wants to send a defensive back on a blitz, he is going to be stalemating those guys, neutralizing, hammering those guys, meeting those guys at the strength, at the attack point, and holding those guys, preventing those guys from even sniffing the pants leg of Bryce Young. So the young man won't, won't have to just roll out of the pocket. He can just throw the ball from inside the pocket. That's what Evan Neal is going to be doing here. And uh, I rem so the one thing that Neal has to improve on a bit here this season is just there are moments, and this, and this happens when you have a guy that's as big as he is. There are times where his, his feet – get a little slow at times, and when he's speaking a little slow at times, it allows for those edge rushers to bend around him. So for Neil, the, the big thing for Neil this season is can he, have, can he have the explosiveness, can he have the burst off the snap of the ball to latch on and lock on to defensive players, as well as consistently maintaining his balance upon the snap of the football. If he can maintain that balance along with having that aggressiveness to his play, then on his side, I don't see Bryce Young getting sacked, of his side at least. Now, he's trying to become the seventh offensive tackle to be drafted in the first round coming from Alabama. Bama has had six offensive tackles get drafted in the Saban era. When you discuss, you know, Andre Smith got drafted in the Saban era first round. You had James Carpenter getting drafted offensive tackle first round Saban era. You had DJ Fluker get drafted in the first round. Then there was Jonah Williams getting drafted in the first round. There was there was Jonah Williams, Jedrick Wills, and the latest one being Alex Netherwood. So six guys in the Nick Saban era have been drafted in the first round since 2009. So Evan Neal trying to be the seventh tackle to come off this board here and get drafted in the 2022 venue. Me personally, I'm going to say this. Mark Evan down for the Outland Trophy. Mark Evan down for the SEC's Jacobs Blocking Trophy. I, I think he gets both of those. I think he takes the Outland Trophy. I think he takes the SEC's Jacobs Blocking Trophy along with, with, with other accolades there. But just that type of freakish, uncanny athleticism, uh, him impressing the, uh, the strength staff. I'm just, just really excited to see what Neil does as a left tackle here for the Crimson Tide. But as always, Bama Nation, you want the, uh, the best in news, notes, information, and coverage here on your favorite program, that being the Alabama Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. Or you can download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you've got the Android phone. Uh, for your audio listening needs, we got you covered right here. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, 
Google Play, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. Got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees fit. I'll be back on Wednesday continuing the conversation that is Bama football. As always, Tide Nation, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. Also, if you're trying to get the uh, the new edition of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, the, pr- the print edition, you can go to touchdownalabama.com. You click join, become a member, a subscriber today. I, I just want to thank everybody again. Thank all of you again. I know the technology was crazy. We, we had some trouble there getting the show started at first, but you guys hung in there with us. You stayed with us. You, you donated. You made this your show. You had that support. Thank you from myself, from John Ivory, from everybody here at the TDA family. Thank you, the fans, for all the support, for all the love, for the time that you have been putting in with us here uh, and the donations as well. Also, if you're trying to get you that four-finger bling necklace, four-finger bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. That's WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. You can check out that link.